How would you like to be remembered, man? How my bitch ready to be titled a good nigga? <laughs> <laughs> what up? What up? It's Q and A. Ronnie Ray, make some noise. Make some noise, man. Make some noise. It's me and you <laughs> on this motherfucker. Yeah. Q and A. Ronnie Ray. I'm Ronnie Ray, of course. Where I bring some of my favorite actors, directors, writers, people in the porn industry, stand up comics. All them kind of people, man. All my favorite people. So I don't give a damn about your opinion. These people are dope, in my opinion. Yes. On the side of me is my man, Maddie Robinson. What up, Pepper bro? Out Chicago. How all good. Feeling? Yeah. And on the phone, man. Oh, this, this dude, man. I, I said I, I act like this every time I talk because I'm surprised and I'm happy for everybody that's on this show, and I react the same way, and he's no different. This dude, man, is probably one of the, his style. I told, I told him this before. <laughs> like, yo, man, I've never seen nobody do comedy like you. I've never seen that. The smoothest style hey, of comedy I've ever heard in my life, man. And I'm like, he, he'd be in a hostile room. He just, like, I don't give a damn <laughs> to my act. And that's the coolest <laughs> shit ever. You know me, I jump all off stage. I'd be all in people's faces. He don't care. He doing, he's doing his thing. <laughs> well, tell <laughs> him who it is. <laughs> no, from Vallejo, California, is my man, D.C. Irvin is here, man. Oh, man, what's up, bro? Hey. Not here. Yeah, he's I, on the phone, I, y'all. I appreciate, that. <laughs> I appreciate that intro, man. Oh yeah, I told you. I, I told Nefertari Spencer I'm charging fifteen dollars uh, for intros. <laughs> I'll send it to y'all. Yo, Michael Buffer charging a million to say, "Yo, let's get ready to run." But I write a whole intro for fifteen dollars. Uh, that intro touched my heart, baby. Hey man, hey, everybody, man, get that love, man. What's going on with you, brother? Um, you know me. I'm out here in the Bay, chilling, man, chilling with the fam for the for the holiday season. Oh okay. Oh, you out there for a minute, then. Well, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip back. I'm gonna go back to LA. Uh, actually, on Thursday, but uh, I'm here. Just, I just, I'm doing like you know a quick little turnarounds up until Christmas. I can't. I can't do like you know how the hometown is. You know, I can't stay here like a month straight. I, I get restless. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've been here three years. I don't know what the fuck going on <laughs> in Chicago. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for Facebook, I wouldn't know none of y'all now. Like this is bullshit. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool. Um, <laughs> We were talking. I'm like, oh, okay, I got him get DC on. He's like, oh, dude from um last comic, and how you know him? I'm like, man, we was in the trenches, the comedy trenches together, in man. The, in, the, in the trenches and, the, and going hard, going hard at Marty's in the other uh, club. It's funny when <laughs> in the intro you mentioned you you hopped off stage. Cause I remember when you hopped off stage when we was at USC doing that show. <laughs> I was just telling him the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he hopped off stage and, you, and got everybody face. I was like, that's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just I'm standing in the back and they heckling my man while you on stage. Look at that mother. Look at this I'm like, wait till I get up there. I'm gonna come down and talk to these <laughs> niggas. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I never forget that show. <laughs> no, that show was dope, man. Oh uh, man, I met you. I met you at um at Amsterdam. Yeah, Jay Jackson McQueen spot. Yeah, Amsterdam. That's 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 right. Yeah, and you went up to the thing with us. Yeah, I saw you on after after that. I saw you on Who's Got Jokes. Man, I, I try to forget them days. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> damn. I thought I was going to give you a nice little highlight, man. Yeah. you like, no, nah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought hey, you were. When, when people tell me it came on, I'll be like, nah, that wasn't me. <laughs> I went good on that show, man. Oh, damn. You got on, though. I ain't, I've yeah, never I been on TV for stand-up. Never. Yeah, I didn't feel like I did good on that show. I was like, ah, man. So when it, especially when you watch it now, like how much I've grown since then. When I watch it now, or if I see it now, if they play a repeat, I'll be like, man, quit airing this shit. <laughs> and they come on like three in the morning. <laughs> you be going to the yeah, bathroom like, wait, is that DC? Because <laughs> <laughs> people don't have no clue that, it, that we did that shit eight, ten years ago. They just be like, man, we just saw you on TV yesterday. You were skinnier. Damn. <laughs> How you gained all that weight in two days, yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> now, DC, check this shit out, right? Okay, here, now, you go. Now, here every, we go. Now, every time we get on the podcast, Ronnie Ray got the story like, let me tell y'all how we met. Womp thing, womp thing, womp thing, womp. Right? This time, yeah. it's my turn. Right? Now, I'm going to see if I can spark your memory for a second. You, did you ever go to Solano Community College? Say that one more time. Did you ever go to Solano in Fairfield? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah. yeah, I did. Solano Community College. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you already laughing, huh? Ain't you? Because you took a. Yeah, I, how you know? Did you take? Did you take an acting class with like George McGuire? Yep, I did. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. George remember, McGuire. Yeah. Remember that little short black chubby kid who always talked shit about you going to Hogan High School? You, uh, in, in the Solano class. In the Solano class, sat next to you because you always wore, you always had them dreads and that hat. Hey, I like what you remember, 
So check it. There's a little kid who sat next to you, a little chubby pudgy, went to Vallejo High School. That kid was me. So what up? <laughs> that oh, shit is crazy, right? <laughs> oh, we bring people that's back together on Q and A with Ronnie Ray. <laughs> He took it back. He took it back to the to the to the to the. Oh man! <laughs> community college days. We got we got two of Will's finest right here. Oh, man. oh what shit! You, what you doing in Chicago, bro? Man, <laughs> this is a reunion now, right? This is my show now. Welcome to the Q and A with Maddie Robinson. <laughs> now, um, what's up, man? <laughs> bro, I'm not. Hold on, hold on. I told him. Hey, Ronnie, you right there. No, I was like, yo, I said, hey, I said, hold on, I'm let him tell you, I'm let him tell you, because when I told him who was next, because I was like, all right, well, what's the name, I can't call him right now, he got somewhere to go, I'm gonna call my man Dito, he out in, um, in, um, the comedian, DC, he's like, DC who? And I said, Irvin, get the fuck, where he from? I'm like, he from Vallejo, oh shit, what the, he ran out the room. <laughs> Hey, that is crazy. And I like I'm gonna let you I like I was gonna tell you before we start I was gonna tell you before we started doing it, but like nah he wanna tell you doing the thing. So I'm gonna wait. Man. Wow, this is crazy. Cause I like, been... now you're good, bro. You said now we interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put the, the headphones down, drink more water outside. Oh, I'm, I'm... Get your headphones down. We finna catch up. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm good, man. Just doing just doing stand up, just doing improv and just living that life out here in this cold ass city, trying to find my way back home. Oh, that's crazy. Hey, man, that is crazy. That was so many years ago. Wasn't it, though? Remember our teacher? Nigga. Yeah, our teacher. Nigga. I'm going to give y'all three minutes. <laughs> he was in, like, a couple movies. He was, man. It's funny, because, like, because um, I told you, because remember on MySpace days, I was like, bro, I see you just moved to L.A. I'm going to get at you. And you was like, oh, babe, if you ever come yeah. to L.A., most deaf. I was like, oh, word. Nigga, I never came. Right? So, <laughs> you never came. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fly and so, to Chicago instead of going down <laughs> south. I'm going way east. Because, like, <laughs> cause like, when I went, last time I went home, Pepper Bellies burnt down. And I was like, damn. Yeah. Damn. And so I was like, fuck. So ever since then, everybody I knew was already out. Just dipped out the scene. I was like, damn. Wow. And then you just, you just you had family and stuff in Chicago. Yeah, man. I was just doing it out here. Just holding it down. Uh, Trying to go in that Ronnie Ray hey, status. Hey, <laughs> this is crazy. Hey, a small world for real. Ain't it? It is crazy. Right now, now it's a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is crazy because when I, I the show I go to, the, when I met him, it was to go see my other boy perform. And me and him just wind up being cool. I'm like, yo, man, you want to come down and like co-host the thing? Oh, hell yeah, man. Whatever. So... And I call you now, bam, and now y'all, oh, it's reunion and I shit. I got too much sauce, Hey, yeah, I'm glad y'all got a cool pass and shit. <laughs> that nigga, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> you owe me $17, nigga. That, that nigga got my money. Hold on, hold on. Keep on the phone. 32 hours. 32 hours. <laughs> it could have got real, it could got real awkward. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you took my woman, nigga. Oh, shit. Quiet on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh, shit! Yeah, we go. We'll, we'll connect further when we get done, man. This is man. I'm, I've been cheesing course, since I saw it was gonna be. You. I was like, oh shit! It's crazy, man. Crazy. Oh hey, man. Congratulations. We got two today. That's good. Man, just saying, it's my, it's my day, man. <laughs> Glad I can make that. But dreams come true on Q and A and Ronnie Ray. Right like do come true. I done felt the homie mad, man. <laughs> 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 Fucking dope. Oh man. All right. Well, back to the subject at hand, y'all. Do this. <laughs> Reunion shit later. <laughs> well, fucking friends. My friends don't fucking call me and shit. <laughs> I ain't got no. It's my show and shit, you know? <laughs> Nigga getting bitter and shit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, all right. All right, this is a question. All right, fuck it. We're going with a question. Um, your dad, I found out a little after I met you, your dad did stand up. Yeah. Wow. How yeah, far did I'm he go? Uh, have you exceeded him? <laughs> How did it work? Like, I'm funnier than you, Dad. How does it work? Did he help Man, you out, get along with him? I don't laugh. I don't laugh. I don't laugh this nigga 20 times. <laughs> 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 I'm laughing and I'm still laughing him today. Just boom, boom. But nah, no, Pop did about, uh, he went, he went, he did about 18 plus, mm. 20, about, I say 18 years plus out the Bay Area. But he never went outside of the bay. He just he kept it kept it you know kept it close to home for the family and all that stuff. Nice. And um, and then once he once he I guess he got tired of it a little bit and he started promoting a little bit. 
And that's when I would start. When he the shows he would promote and put on comedy shows in San Francisco, Oakland, all over, mm-hmm. I would be going going to the comedy shows, sitting in the back and stuff. You know, I couldn't really be in there, in there, right. like nine or whatever. But I'd be sitting in the back, just chilling and observing, and not really, uh, not really. Ca- you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't even think about doing no comedy back then. I just thought it was just weird. It was oh, there's some of your dad, like your dad was a mailman. That's what he did. You know what I mean? Right. I thought, I thought everybody's daddy was a comedian. I oh, thought wow. it was just normal. You know? Right. Oh wow. Okay. So, yeah, but then I get he got bitter with it and start or got tired of it. I ain't gonna say bitter, got tired of it. You know, cause he said back then it was hard to get up on stage, especially was in the mainstream room, like punchline and stuff. Mm-hmm. He said they didn't put a lot of blacks up. It was like the only ones they put up was like Marshall Warfield, George Wallace, and you know uh, the mainstream ones. So he had to, you got to back then you had to do your own thing, whatever yeah. the case was. So and they start putting on the same thing, same thing kind of now where you get tired and you be like, man, I'm put my own show on. Yeah. Damn, they got to. So they honor you, man. Yeah, you got to. Wow. Yeah, so you said you laughed them 20 times. <laughs> is that a, is that some shit y'all talk about? I've been, 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 been on TV, movies, I've been laughing pops. <laughs> <laughs> you be making fun of him at like Thanksgiving dinner or some shit? Like you making fun of him at Thanksgiving dinner, pass the potatoes, you bust the motherfucker, <laughs> left your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you ain't funny. No. If you to give me advice, I'll be like, if you leave me, or leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me. That nigga should do that that joke first. That bitch should come at the end and shit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, man, girl. My dad wasn't even a comedian. He's still trying to tell me how you should just do one. You should do a uh, parody of uh, Bruno Mars. Is, um, don't believe me, just watch. I'm like, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you doing like, that shit? Oh fuck! Oh man! So what? So what was the? So you say you was at nine years old. When did you like decide to get on stage? I uh, I hopped on when I was like twenty two. Hmm. And you know, it's funny as I be looking at it like I should have. I should have. I could have been a prodigy, Ronnie. So if I would have hopped on back then, I would have been one of them. You know, one of them uh, Eddie Murphy deals. But I didn't realize it was something that I you know I wanted to get into. You know what I mean? Until hmm. later. Hmm. I didn't get on stage for about 22 and when I hopped on I was just like ah, this, this is it but then I think about it, if I would have started too early I probably wouldn't have been ready you know what I mean right right well, you never know definitely you know, you know how it go yeah I oh, mean okay so where did you perform was it one of your dad's shows or you just went out with, you didn't want no, him to know for, about no, it for, no. Well, for, no first time I hopped on was at uh, was at the, uh, that little spot Matt mentioned uh, Pepper Bellies. oh wow that was the first. He and I was the first place I got on stage at Pepper Bellies, and then, uh, uh, and it, you know, it was funny. I was supposed to manage one of my. Uh, this is how I went. I was supposed to manage one of my homies. One of my homies started doing comedy before me, mm-hmm. and I told him I was like, "All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna manage you. I'm gonna get all the information from my dad because he know comedy, and I'm gonna take you to the top. That's how I felt. And then I, I gave this nigga some advice. And he went on stage and did exact exact opposite. Took that bomb <laughs> to the face. Oh damn! And I was like, "Hey, we not this ain't no good prodigy right here." So I was like, "Let me give it a shot." And then I hopped on stage, and then the rest was like, you know, it wasn't no like glowing moment, but it was like I knew that damn, I I kind of this, this it came kind of easy, you know what I mean? Right. And then my dad was like, "Well, won't you do it?" And I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna do it." And you know what he told me? He was like, I, "He was like, I'm gonna give you uh, he was I told him I was like, I'm gonna give it six months, Dad." If I don't make it big in six months, I'm done. And nigga was like, okay. <laughs> 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 Ain't no way you're going to be better than me anyway, son. Six months, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Ain't no way you're going to be better than me anyway, son. So, yeah. yeah Keep exactly. that up. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. So, you just mentioned exactly. you just mentioned bombing. <laughs> I know you had to oh, take yeah. one. What's your worst oh, one? What's that worst ever? Give me that bomb story. Oh man, bombing boy! Who I, I read? Where I, where was I at? Uh, I was in Inglewood at the J spot. Oh, and I, dude, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on, DC. That that the J spot. Every time I ask that question, that is normally the club where everybody <laughs> bombed at. <laughs> Cornelia, Keenan, Chaz, um, who else? Who else was just on here? I think Nika was on here. Nika was on um, here. Tequita. It was a bunch of everybody say the J spot. Go ahead. Oh yeah, the J-Spot. <laughs> it's notorious. The J spot took me to a whole. The J spot had me feeling like feel, I was filling out job applications in my head. Oh, damn. I was on stage like this ain't. I was like this ain't for me. I was like this ain't for me. <laughs> I promise, bro. I was like, oh man, I'm finna go find out where they hiring that because this ain't gonna. This ain't gonna. It hurt. 
Cause wow. I, I, I forgot what happened. No, this is what happened. I pulled out a, um, it was my mistake. I bummed, but it was all my mistake, and I blame myself for it. Sometimes you'd be at the J spot, and the host, Derek Ellis, was hosting. Oh, God. And Derek Ellis was, Derek Ellis was up there being long winded. You know, just <laughs> I said, ah. Talking, talking. <laughs> And That's how you talk. <laughs> I said, uh, have fun. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> he gonna give me some. He gonna give my mama some sleeping pills, and she taking them with coffee. <laughs> That's my boy, though. Crazy. <laughs> That's how, that's how the nigga talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pra- I've been practicing, bro. I've been practicing, my dear. Yeah, just in case. Some countless talents got. Anybody do that? Yeah, got this part. Oh, uh, Go ahead. <laughs> right, look, so Derek Ellis, so Derek Ellis on stage. He going, he going, he going, he going. And he get, it's a Saturday night. And he get a room, a real open mic feel. And I'm just like, all right, cool. It's, this is what we doing Saturday night. Open mic style. Perfect. I wanted to work some stuff out anyway. So I get on stage and I pull out my notebook and then this dude, he yelled out loud as hell, Pack he just I know this nigga did not just pull out a notebook. Right? <laughs> and then the crowd the crowd start laughing. They start laughing. I'm like, Oh, whatever, whatever And so I try to act like I try to act like oh I was gonna deal with it. And this is how bad he starts shutting me down. I was like, oh, you don't want me to come at you. He was like, bring it on, nigga. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about they going crazy. I'm talking about they going crazy. The bartender back there spilling drinks. I can see all this shit. I can see everything going on. Like, this, look, Ronnie, this how bad... This how bad he was getting me. His girl was like, baby, just stop. Let him do his shit. <laughs> <laughs> not his eyes, not his no, no, he's not even going to come at me. Rest rest was, I, hey, I didn't get on stage for hella long after that, Ronnie. Two weeks. Wow. Damn. Wow. Yeah, I sat down two weeks. I was like, I'm good. I'm good off comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll tell you one thing. I never took a piece of paper back up there. Oh, damn. That's the lesson. I, that's all I do now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck you. You want to come at me? You know, I jump off the stage on your ass. Shit. <laughs> Give a fuck. I'm working on something. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that was it. The J spot. I, I think everybody gotta have one. You gotta have them. You gotta take them L. Yeah, that actually wasn't my worst L. I don't did I take an L there. I, I always did okay there. Cause I yeah. noticed I watched. I went. Well, um, I, I told this. I told this story like four or five times. Over here. I hosted for Rodney Perry one weekend. Michelle called me like, "Yo, Rodney, want you to come host the show for him?" I'm glad he's doing better. Um, Rodney Perry, right out there, if you listening. Um, oh yeah, shout out to Ronnie Perry. Yeah, and she's like, "Well, she's like, you host, you ever been up here before? Like, I never been up there." And you're like, "Well, come up here this week and watch the host because this is a different vibe." And I'm like, "Okay." So I made a special trip to go see the show. Uh-huh. It was a different vibe. I noticed that dude did a whole lot of crowd work. There was no, it was a crowd participation, and you have to be hip to the room, and you got to be this, you got to be that. So yeah, they don't want to see you reading. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm not about to even yeah, be thinking the clever <laughs> shit. I'm just about to entertain these motherfuckers. And they had all this birthday lists and all that shit. So when I went up, I did my shit. And the day after, the next day, I had the whole weekend, me, Tyree, and Rodney. And he called me that morning. and was like, man, what the fuck are you doing? Just do your fucking act, man. What you doing that shit for? I'm like, man, I see how that room is. He's like, man, just do your act. So when I went in to intentionally do some jokes... <laughs> I still had to read all the fucking birthday wishes and all that, so I ain't had time to really do shit when I was hosting. So when I went back later, oh, yeah. it was all good. I, I knew how the room felt, so when I got into my shit, I just went right into it. I didn't even, yeah, fuck all that. I, I, I wasn't scared of their ass. I went at them, and then I went into my. Oh yeah, yeah, see, yeah, see? yeah I almost, I almost, it almost, and it wouldn't be no DC Irving if I didn't muster up the strength after that night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I took my L in another city. I took my L in Miami and shit. I flew to get that L, dog. That was some bullshit, bro. <laughs> 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 so no, I, hey, I almost quit show business. Period. Too. So no, them L's really fucking. It you must up. have been. You must have been the Benji Brown spot. There it is. There you went. How'd you do that? Did you do that spot? <laughs> I I never did it, but I've heard all the horror stories. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember coming back and Ron. I told Ron G I was there. He like, yeah, man. Is you did that? How you do, man? Like, man, I walked off the stage. First two shows, I walked <laughs> off the stage. Um, eight minutes and two minutes. Eight minutes and twelve minutes in. I got off and Ron like you what you do, man? Like, man, I fought my way through it, man. I ain't care. I'm gonna do my hack. Yeah. Little, yeah, little G was like, Man, I don't that shit fucked up, wasn't it? I'm like, Yeah. Bullshit, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard I heard that room could be a beast. They shut it down though. The homie said, Oh, for real? Yeah, they ain't got it no more. Uh good but you bank died. Who? 
I said, I said, thank God. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, heard, no, I heard it was a, t- I heard it was a tough spot though. But now, now I'm at a point right now where it don't even like now it ain't ain't no such thing for me like that no more. I'm so you know what I mean. I'm so right. comfortable in it. I'll just sit in and make the audience feel whatever, whatever however they make me feel. I'm gonna make them feel that way. Wow, mm. that's dope. That's some meta shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's some old Jedi shit right yeah, there. That's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's that's Heckle if right you there. want. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's all if comedy. I'm making me feel a certain way. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them feel like you know out whatever whatever I'm feeling. If if y'all having fun, I'm gonna have some fun. If they ain't having fun, then I'm hey, this is gonna be a a library ass set. <laughs> <laughs> It's all jokes. Remember, it's comedy. I don't care what you do, people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not changing my mood. I'm not quitting. This ain't the J spot. Yeah. Derek Ellis is nowhere near this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dope. Uh, so, so what's your process when you write? Do you like watch the news or something, or you just all off life? That, um, my process, man. You know, what's funny is I don't, I don't write no more. It just uh. And I ain't like Jay Z or whatever the fuck it is, but mm. if w- whatever come to me that day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. And then if it if it works, I'm gonna I'm gonna record that, make a mental note in my head, and then just put, place it in my set because my set is already you know for the most part our sets are already there. Mm-hmm. So now we just add to them, building the you know building the base up with all that stuff. So it's hard for me to just sit down and just and just oh let me I'm gonna write some jokes. I'm gonna write some jokes. Normally I'm out and about and I see something and hear something and I'll just, you know, I'll jot that note down or whatever or put it in my phone or whatever. Then I'll write it on stage. So my process, I do I do most of my writing when I get on stage. Mm. And, and see, you know, see, and then I can tell if something got some legs or if it don't got nothing to it. Most of the time, if it ain't, if I don't die laughing at it, when I see it or feel it, then I don't want to tell it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you to find that great. If it, if it don't offend me, if it don't offend me, if it don't offend me, look, a lot of stuff, stuff, shit that offend us it comes out to be the funniest. Right. So if it don't offend me, you know, when I'm out and about, then I'm like, first you got to be offended by something, then be like, man, that's fucked up. And then be like, well, let me talk about it. Nice. Nice. So, so do you throw away jokes at all? Nice. I've lost a lot. I wouldn't say I throw them away, but I've lost a lot because I, uh, you know, another thing I don't do and I might start doing it in the near future is I don't record. You don't record? So I don't record. No, I don't record. I don't record. So sometimes I'll go up there and uh, and come off the dome or whatever the case is and, and say some funny shit, and I, I'll forget what I said. So I probably lost a lot of jokes. That ain't the right way. I don't think that's the right way to go about doing it. I think I know I should be recording, mm-hmm. but I, I, it keeps it fresh for me, and it keeps it, it keeps it fun for me. Right. And it keeps it, it keeps it feeling like it keeps me in the moment, too. Like, damn, all right, well, well I got to, I got to, you know, I got to, I don't want to start you know, repeating it sound like a recorder all the time. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't record. I don't record. I don't write my bits down. Cause I feel like it's going yeah. by the script. So like, all right, well I just have like bits, like um the topic and then the pieces of the pieces of the topic, the bits of the topic, have that down and just go from there. So whatever is funny from that, I write it out or whatever and then do it. But now I'm trying to do all these yeah. albums and shit, so <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of all these jokes, man. I don't want this shit. I was telling this. I started. Yeah, stand, yeah. <laughs> I started to say. I started stand up in '04, and I was still doing some of the same shit in like 2012. I'm like, nah, man, this shit gotta go. So these albums I'm selling is not for me to make go platinum. It's just for me <laughs> to put the shit out, <laughs> so I don't have to do the jokes no more. It forced me to write and come up with new shit all the time. That's all it is. So. We all have different processes. So. And I, I, yeah, I feel the exact same way. So, you know, I, I got a bunch of stuff that probably a lot of people haven't heard, but I don't like telling it no more, but I don't want to just let it go to waste. Right. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Don't let them get out of date, because I got like a, a notebook full of Michael Jackson jokes I can never <laughs> use again. What, Bill Clinton, Ronald like, Reagan, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Watergate, nigga. Like if it was the nineties, nigga, I'd be hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jokes get dated. Jokes get dated real yeah, quick. They get dated real quick, so nah. Everything yeah, real quick. Done. You got something though? Wait till my mouth is full shit. Oh, no, sorry, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Coming out of his nose. <laughs> so um so you got you got kids, man. How's it how is it to uh to balance having little ones and doing stand up and hustling and grinding out there? 
So mine, mine, they far from little ones now. Mine, damn near uh, women. I got an eighteen year old and a seventeen year old about to be, about to be uh eighteen. Nigga, they eighteen, seventeen. Um, what the fuck? They grown? D- damn! Yeah. <laughs> oh no, dog, dog! Oh no! <laughs> damn! Uh, nigga, that's how long I know. I got my little girls, man. Whatever. Oh shit! I'm like, okay, eighteen to seventeen, nigga. nigga, nigga that's how. That's how you know we go back. Well, it's like, yeah, I ain't a little ones on. Nigga, they just took me to the doctor. Yeah, they just, they just around that time, man. Yeah, nah, they grown now, man. They in, about to graduate high school and everything. So, oh, uh, damn, it was hard at first. Yeah. yeah, it was hard at first, but I started when they were so young. That it's all they know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So they 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 used to me like, all right, Dad, well, I gotta go for a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. Now they kind of excited when I when I leave and come back. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's weird. They 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 miss me, but they be like, they don't. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so when I come back, it's more like when I'm here, they they like, yeah, Dad's here. But when I'm gone, they be like, all right, cool. We can kind of do our own thing and don't gotta be monitored that heavy and all that stuff. You know, <laughs> right. whatever. It takes. When you leaving again? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, and I swear she'd be saying that. When you leaving? <laughs> she can hear it tell you, when you leaving? Well, since you got since you got a dose in, so um, is your is your um, let's see how can I word this? Is your hustle gonna change when they go off to school or when they go to college? When they're gone? Uh, I, I, I I think it's going um I mean, I definitely think I gotta pick it up regardless of them being gone or you know or not. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm one of those communities that think I should be like, like everybody else. Who, you know, we think we should be further than what we are mm. if if we just put in the right amount of work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I definitely know there's more I could be doing. So I don't think it's going. It's going to increase, but it's not. It, it won't have anything to do with them. You know what I mean? That yeah, makes I sense. Cause yeah. I've I've been in and out regardless. As it, as it you know as it is I've been they haven't been hindering my hustle. Sometimes a little bit when I gotta miss out on something if I gotta come in. Hang, hang with them like like you know it's funny I had to I had a part on that uh on that HBO show on that Insecure show and okay. you I did couldn't do it oh you couldn't do it yeah, man I couldn't look I couldn't do it I couldn't do it because I was at my see I got the call right mm-hmm. and I was at my family reunion with my kids in uh in Memphis and mm-hmm. I was like they were like hey can you be here on Monday and I was like ah uh, I it was a hard, it would have been a hard push you know I would have had to leave them behind. And then go then I, and so certain things like that where you and it wasn't a, it wasn't like a major role or nothing like that. it was a small part of it, mm-hmm. but still HBO is HBO. True. But it was just like one of those things where I was like ah, I'm gonna sack I'm gonna stay behind for my kids and and, and and just you know I did a dad move instead of a, a career move. You know? Oh wow. Uh, what role yeah, was it? Was it the um, was it the game bank and talking about the bouch? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was I was playing. It was funny. I was supposed to play a um on it was it was like on she was. When Molly's watching TV or something like that, I was supposed to be on a TV show. She was watching. Oh, you was gonna be on a <laughs> conjugal yeah, visit? Yeah, nigga, <laughs> <laughs> I want a goddamn infomercial, nigga. <laughs> That's so funny. Shit, I'm right? sorry if you asked that question because so it was, was on like... the show, nigga, but on the show, nigga. You know what I mean? Like, so I was gonna say, I'm like, alright. Oh, <laughs> that is funny shit. Yeah, Hell yeah, I was on Insecure. So watching TV and I'm on the TV she watches. <laughs> they write those shows. That's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um the grind, man. You, you did you start acting? You started you was already acting. I'm just finding this out now. You guys went to school for it. Um what's like your biggest thing have you that you've done? I know I, I know Haunted House. I remember you using that. Now, we had Dion on the show a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Dion Lack. Dion Lack. <laughs> uh, how was that working with Marlon on that, man? Oh, that was dope, man. That was dope because uh, I mean, I, I say it's dope because you somebody you be just hard not to be uh, I ain't gonna say starstruck, but in ever a million years when I started off doing doing this, I think I'd be in a movie with you know with the Wayans, you know what I mean? Yeah. With, like people in the same room with them, why? You know what I mean? So it's all mm-hmm. it, it didn't feel real when we were filming. Mm. Yeah. yeah what? No, you you hang out with Damon and them. Like that wasn't surprising. Like with Damon um, Junior and all of them. Y'all at the mic. It was. It was with with Damon. Damon's different than Marlon and them. You know what I mean? Because mm. Damon, Damon, Damon Junior is like I didn't grow up watching Damon Junior because he was growing up when I was growing up. Right. You know what I mean? True. But I grew up watching watching Marlon and watching you know Damon Senior and all that. So it'd be weird like. Like you, I mean, I knew Damon was there, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't, I didn't. He he kind of came to the forefront a little later on, you know what I mean? 
Right. Yeah, that's Marlon like, with, Wayans. With Marlon, then that can live. You know, that's people you recognize from. I'm gonna get you, sucker, and all that stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super dope. So that that's what makes you kind of like, damn. This is this is this is a uh, pretty pretty cool to be on. You know, on, on set with them. Let alone, you know. It, like, I caught myself at certain points just staring at these niggas like, oh, 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 you know, it's funny. No, I'm, a, I'm, a, I want to, I'm, a, I'm going. I got a, a, a New York trip scheduled January the, like January the 20th. So I'm gonna go around that time. I'm way past due for a New York trip. I got a bunch, you know, know a bunch of people I know out there. They'd be like, "DC, you gotta come out here and this and that." And I always prolong it. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, let me go out there and see what the hype is about, and just focus on stand up for like two weeks straight. So I got a trip scheduled at the end of the month, I, and I can't wait. I want to see. If, I want to see. I'm gonna go down there and test them. They always. I hear a lot of New York comics. They be like, "Man, the comedy community in L.A. It ain't the same. This and that. We better and this." And I'm so like, okay. I'm gonna come test and see what y'all are talking about. Yeah, yeah. Everybody always say that though. <laughs> New York yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. always I, stay I, claiming I being the best. True. Yeah, I've never made that trip. I think I did an improv like festival there. That was the only time I've been in New York. Well, yeah, I might have to make that trip too. Yeah, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna just hit it. Just be like, let me, let me go out here and hit it and see what it do. The NY. You just going to hit mics or you got already stuff scheduled? I got, I got, you know, you know, through the years, I've met like a couple people that I know enough to where they can be like, all right, get me to the one room and then I can spread out from there. But really, I'm going to do everything. Uh-huh. I'm going to go from the, you know, I'm going to be, just, I'm there for comedy, so I might as well hit some mics. Yeah. But you, yeah, I know a couple yeah. cats, uh, you know, you, you know, just by passing through a couple of Derek Gaines, Rob uh, Stapleton, all them cats. Mm-hmm. I do want to hit the mainstream mm-hmm. rooms. Yeah, the the ballers. <laughs> the Yo, DC, out there. Yeah. How was um how was the grind different from the bath in, in LA? Because when I was starting up in the comedy shit, they wouldn't let me get in any of them bars because I looked I looked underage and they all swore my ID was fake. So <laughs> so I never got stage time. Which is why I moved to Illinois. I said, Fuck y'all <laughs> So like so how is it different? Because you know how we when we were growing up we was like, Man, fuck so cow. Dang shit. Oh yeah, so so you said how is it different from the bay to LA? Yeah. As far as comedy goes, uh, I think the Bay got the, L.A. is way more comedy because, mm-hmm. like, you know, you can, you know, I damn near lived across the street from like when I lived in North Hollywood, I was across the street from a comedy club, like a ha ha. I was, you know, in the Bay, you kind of got to go out to get it. Like, you have to go like to San Fran or Sacramento to get it. It don't be like too many like decent spots in between. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the quality of comedy in the Bay Area might be a little bit more sharper than uh than than LA. Meaning like the and not not the comedians, I say the people. Like San Francisco is like a little New York. Right. So people you know, it's like they is more diverse and you and you and you get that feel of like I gotta be able to make everybody laugh to where sometimes in LA it could be kinda segregated. Like you got your Mexican night, your black night, your white night, you know what I mean? Mm. Yep. Nice. Yeah. I was asked but that um one big Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, yeah. I was done. Okay. <laughs> anyway, of uh, comedy, nigga. Um, yeah. I was asked that question here when I first moved back. Um, young comic from Chicago asked me what was better, Chicago comics or L.A. And I was like, you know what? I I had to. Be, I'm kind of biased because I'm just not getting back here. I really don't know a lot of people here, but out there is my family. You know what I mean? I was out with y'all every night. You know what I mean? Being the Marty's yeah. all day uh-huh. and this and that. But then you got, but L.A have somebody from everywhere like it's like a a mixed in pot like some x-man team type shit because you'll go to open mic some nights and everybody's killing like you literally got like yep. tie your shoes up and shit i remember the show we did um the, that was the last show i did the crack them up thursday 10 year anniversary and they had she had all the hosts go up Man, oh yeah, dude! I was like, man, I gotta come with it. Like, this is this shit's about to be something. <laughs> I saw the lineup, like, all right, <laughs> and they bumped me for somebody. Like, now nah, you going up second? I'm like, what? All right, so I go up and I like fucking hit it, hit it. Then uh, who? Ocean went after me, and he did his thing. Justin kills Ron G. You, Tony comes out. Esau, 
Jay Phillips, all this, every everybody that came up was killers, man. And I like that's the shit I'm talking about right there. Like everybody yeah. was some from somewhere else and styles were different. A lot of hitters on one show right there. Yeah, I, I rocked. I rocked that shirt. <laughs> I got made the shirt out of that. And um, the only person that didn't show up was Leslie, and she's the biggest star in the world right now. <laughs> I know, right? And right, and rightfully so. Oh yes, oh y'all, y'all shit. I'm glad she married it, boy. She would be a mad ass woman. <laughs> I, I used to co-host with her. And she was like, Ronnie, you fucking new jack ass niggas, fuck them, shit. <laughs> you the only motherfucker I like and shit, Ronnie, fuck that shit. I'm like, damn, stop being so fucking mad. <laughs> this is a comedy show. Uh, but no, they, God bless her, man. And um, how how you like that leading into that? How How is it working there with Nichelle and Levi, man? I miss them, man. That's my fan. Oh man, Michelle and Uncle Levi, man, that's Michelle has helped me so so much, man. Uncle Levi, it, that, and it, and, that, and it's exactly what you said. It's family, man. It's like uh, we've been in it for so long now that like working with your your cousin and your sister now, you know what I mean? Like right. And your uncle, you know. So working with them is a uh, it's all it's always a uh, like pleasant experience. You know what I mean? Like you know, of course you got your ups and downs, but that's like with anything else, you know. Right. Uh, so, nah, cracking on Thursdays help me hone my hone my skills. That room will make you strong as hell. Oh, I I jumped in on that show. She let me host that yeah. show probably three months in after I started on a regular. So yeah. that's why I went so hard at the mics. I was doing improv and you know, acting and shit, and I started doing hit the mics hard. When she gave me that, I was like I gotta be ready every week. So that's why you saw me yeah, every fucking mic in fucking city of L.A. or Hollywood, whatever. And I was ready. You know, some I I'm I'm fortunate to see a lot of killers come through. I was watching Tony Roberts special the other day, man. Laugh my ass off, but then I'm watching I didn't it. See it. How was it? Oh my god, man! I watched. That. I put. I tweeted. I don't be tweeting shit. <laughs> I like. I just watched this nigga shit twice. This dude's a killer. Like he's a fucking killer. And I, I had to watch it. I had a fucking opportunity to work with him because when Spanky didn't show up before that Leslie came in, he used to come and host the show, and I got a chance to sit back and watch him and Lavelle Crawford. Kevin Hart, that room had a lot of, lot of good shit coming through there, man. So I, I got the education hey, crack, real hey, quick. Crack up, huh? Yeah, yeah. So hey, I know she listening to it. <laughs> Michelle, thank you. Appreciate. Oh yeah. You. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, much love. Yeah, no. I think I and I and I, I got to I always tell people it's the best show that uh that's in L. A. Because I think it's, it's, you catch everybody that's up and coming. Right. And it's uh and it's raw, and it's not none of that uh. Like, I think when you go to them other shows, it's kind of, like, watered down. You don't catch people in their tear in their natural element because they're trying to show off for, like, who might be in the audience. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, which is, you know, it's okay, but I think Crack Them Up is where it's, like, dark. It's just in the dungeon, and it's, like, you know, it's it's the audience ain't they not going to give you no sympathy laugh. Oh, you know, hell no. every chuckle you get in there. You know what I mean? No, once you hit them. Up, like you... I said, it's up and coming. Yeah, once you hitting it's, that it's room, you hitting that room. Like, you, you hitting it. Like motherfuckers are falling and yeah. shit. It's like it's a mini Def Jam in that bitch. It's yeah, fucking ridiculous. Bro. Um, yeah, man, much love. I'm, I'm about to share the tip, man, because that's where it all started right there, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> you okay, brother? I don't know, dog. I don't know. <laughs> Pass the handkerchief. I said handkerchief and shit. Uh, man, <laughs> no, man, that's dope, dude, man. Uh, yeah, keep it going. I thought I thought you left. I literally was looking at the flyers like, where DC at? Actually, I've been away so long. She put them comics on there. I probably only like she had like ten comics. Only like no one person. <laughs> like, this is how long I've been going. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, a lot of people be asking DC. You still hosting? I'll be like, you know, I'll be gone. I'll be on the road traveling now. You know. Which is good, and you know I be missing the room, but you know when that money be calling, I gotta get it, you know. Oh hell yeah, gotta go get that cash, bro. Yeah, yeah, I mean I need to get that money, so I I try to be there whenever I'm in town. I try to make sure I'm there, whatever. But you know, road show will be Thursday through Sunday, so I'll be having to miss. And you know, and, and it's also good things I get a, get a chance to get a uh, other comedians like Chance, like Ron Taylor. He be hosting when I'm gone. Uh, uh, who else be hosting? Uh, Ron John A be hosting or whatever the case is. Yeah, by your name, and Ron. They both like, <laughs> yeah, you know, they oh, you said John A. John A. Okay, I know her. Yeah, everybody get a little you know. Okay, cool, man. Dope. It's Q and A, Ronnie Ray, my man Matty Robinson. Yo, on the side. DC Irvin's on the phone, spitting that comedy knowledge. <laughs> the comedy <laughs> knowledge. Yeah. Hey, man, what's the best thing about being a stand-up? The best thing about being a stand up is like it feels like that uh we ain't working. 
like when we work and it still ain't work. You got to think, most of us started off doing, like when I first got paid for this, I got $15 at a show in Richmond. I got $15. Mm. And the lady handed me the $15, and I was like, I get paid for this? <laughs> like, I didn't even know. Like, I was like, oh, we be getting money. Like, and I think that's the the, 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 the best thing about it is that it's, when you're in your moment on stage having fun, yeah. it's still, I mean, the, the money be great, but it still be fun on that stage when you, when you, it ain't, it ain't no feeling like when you rip, I'm talking when you ripping a set, it ain't no feeling like roller coasters, bungee jumping. That feeling when you walk off stage through the crowd, like yeah. after you done ripped, is man, it's a, it's, it don't get, it's, a bit, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's you amazing. Just feel, you just feel like everybody like you for like, you know what I mean? Every, you're the most popular person <laughs> in, well, that in minute. The school. Yes. Exactly. So you go home, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like me today? You performing today, nigga? But we don't like you. No, like I like even with crack 'em up Thursday. Like when you kill everybody, because you got to walk through the people. So you shaking everybody's hand and Levi's at the end. Like man, what's up? Boom! It was every time. That's what you go for. That's every why you perform. Time. So yeah, and that. And, and when I bomb, and nobody say shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. The, the flip, the flip side is horrible. Yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> but no, it is the best side. What's what's the um? So what's the ultimate goal in this? You know what I mean? Like you, you striving for something. The yeah, the ultimate goal is I'll be switching up a little bit. But now, now is I just want to be uh, I want a cult following. Like I want, I want where. If I'm in Chicago, or if I'm in New York, or if I'm in wherever I'm at, that people, oh, we want to see DC Irvin, and, and I don't necessarily mean like a movie star, like a Bill Burr type. Dude. Like for me, I, I, I love comedy so much that I don't mind the Bill Burr career, or the uh, you know, or the Louis Louis C.K. Like they, they got their movies, they got a few little TV shows, this and that, whatever the case is. Or especially Bill Burr. Bill Burr really don't got no major movie role or nothing, but he got a solid ass fan base that when he go out, they come to see him. Wow. I think that's my, that would be like my ultimate goal. I want people just to, man, I want to go see DC Irving. That's it. Oh yeah. You want to come out, man. And then let the rest, let the rest fall in place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you got something? Yeah. TV, the movie, movie, movies don't move me that much. To be honest with you, Ronnie. Oh damn. Okay. And fuck movies. Yeah, movies and stuff that don't move me that much. I like, I love the stand up part of it so much. Oh, yeah, the, the instant. But if they give them to me, I take them. That ain't mean I turn down the road, you know, niggas. They be like, hey. <laughs> you gonna take this movie? This yeah, is $3 million. Dollars. All right, no, nah, I'm gonna do this stand up over at yeah. Marty's, nigga. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got, you got yeah. something, Maddie? Yeah. So, so you were on Last Comic Standing, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how was. This past season. Yeah, how was, how was that experience? Like, how was it? Say one more time, Manny. What's the question? Oh, I said, how was it to be on Last Comic Standing? Like that whole process. Oh, that was like that was probably my uh, and shout out to NBC or whatever case is, but that was probably the the uh, the largest amount of. I think the my episode took in eleven million viewers, and oh, that was like, the most people I've ever been seen in front of. Wow. Uh, you know, whatever case was, so I think that was a uh, that put me on a uh, on another level as far as like you got to pay me something now. Oh yeah, you can work forever yeah. now. Yeah, you know I mean, you can work yeah, forever I now. You know that, right? Now. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was on last coming standing. Give them the headline the spot. You want the sweet? <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a damn. No. So, yeah. so, did, you, so did you audition for that, or did they come out to you? No, I just had to audition. I had to do a. Uh, I think it was funny. I couldn't get the LA audition because it was too packed. Mm. Or the case is, so I had to come up to the um, to the they all they had they happen to have audition in Frisco. So I had to uh, fly out to Frisco and audition in Frisco, and then after you audition in Frisco, you had to uh, you made it to the next round. You had to audition at uh had to go back to Universal City, Universal Studios, and audition there. And that audition was with uh, no audience, no nothing. It's just uh, Wanda Sykes. Uh, who else was there? It's Wanda Sykes and and uh, the other uh, creator, Paige Paige Kerwitz or something like that. And it was just them two, <laughs> so he got, so oh. I had to audition in front of two people and deliver my jokes and be funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Did yeah, you so, um? Did you have like they, did, you have a set bit? You had your set bits ready to go, or did you change up that day? 
No, I, I kind of knew what I was going to, I knew what I wanted to do. Cause I, I was like, well, let me get, let me do what got me to, to, to this point. Mm. And I played the same. And I, I, you could hear, you couldn't see the other comedian sets cause they, the way they had us blocked off or whatever, but you can hear. And I heard other comedians that auditioned with me in Frisco making changes and then not going well. You know what I mean? I was like, Ooh, let I me, mean, let me stick to the guideline. Right. Mm. Right. No, I, I say that cause I remember auditioning yeah, but, for, um, NBC Diversity. You remember that ride up to Arizona or down there, or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won't say no more about that. But I remember. Yeah. No, it's a that's a whole show we ain't by itself. Talk about who was in my pocket. Yeah, that's, a talk, that's a whole nother show. And I know the people that's listening that was in the van with us know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but um, I remember going up. They're like, "You got a minute?" And I changed what I was gonna do just before I walked on the stage. And didn't go over. And I was like, damn, did I mess up because I didn't do the other act or whatever? That's why I asked the question. Like, um, yeah, do you go with your first gut or do you change when it's necessary? In, in my mind, I wanted to change. But when I heard the other people making them changes, I was like, let me go. I'm going to go with my gut. And right. I went my gut. And it and it so happened. But it, it could have went either way. You know what I mean? Right. No, I dig it. Yeah, you just never know what they in the mood for, but it was it, so that to me I got lucky and it uh God looked out and you know, I made it on, so oh, okay. Was it was it harder to do a show for two people as opposed to like a room full of people? I think it was harder to do a showcase for two people. Cuz we you you know, we get you we you know, sometimes in LA you go perform in front of one person. Oh yeah. 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 Well, it'd be a soft shake. Hey, Marty. <laughs> Be at the bar, be a yeah. salt shake and a bartender. That motherfucker. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> oh, I dig it. So that wasn't the hard part. The hard part was just knowing. I was like, damn, this how y'all gonna do me? Just two people for this? You know what I mean? Like, I ain't get no crowd for this. Like, this is a big deal. <laughs> you can do crowd work that day. <laughs> Look at that. that. Was more the hard part. <laughs> Look at this chair over here. You can say shit. Wanda, you ever be walking down the street? Don't talk to me. <laughs> shit. Uh. I'm judging you. <laughs> 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 You can, yeah, you be wanting to do some crowd work. <laughs> That's how I get into my shit, up. see? <laughs> I ain't on the show because they ain't had no crowd. Is it? Yeah. Man, if they had an audience, I would have fucked that shit up. <laughs> I'd be the last comic standing now. <laughs> <laughs> the first yeah. comic sitting in this bitch. <laughs> Hell no. That's exactly how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so um, shit. Okay. Um, you got any advice for young comics out there, man? Like, should it, should this be something they attempt? My advice for young comics out there. My advice for young comic out there would be to man, be original, and be yourself. And uh, and uh, what would I say? Try not to watch too many of your favorite comedians because you might start sounding like them mm. uh by accident. And 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 if you start sounding like them, we'll never know how you're supposed to sound. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like we want to know, like who who's the who's the who's the next Ronnie Ray? Who's the next DC Irving? Who? Because they the people that you admire might admire you if you be yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, 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 that's good shit. That's good shit. All right. Now, that's that's a cool. Cause I asked that question just about every comic on the show, and I heard Jeremy, Jeremy Scipio, like, T cut the fucking TV off, <laughs> just leave. Don't have, don't, don't give a fuck about that game, none of that shit. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm serious? Like, I don't watch no TV. It's all about stage. I'm like, damn, you're right. So that was, <laughs> he's right. I need to cut my cable off, then. Shit, basketball back though. Shit, bulls are playing. <laughs> you know, Dwayne Wade in Chicago that's, now. Uh, that's my vibe. It's cable in the Warriors. Warriors games. I miss the show for the Warriors game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, you dope, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shoot. We, what's, what's up? You got something now? I don't even know, man. Hey, you, you too man. comfortable with this guy, man. That whole... <laughs> so y'all fucked up the whole thing. Y'all okay, motherfuckers man. know each other in college and shit. I'm like, this doesn't fucking... You can't go out to that happy shit. I ain't talking serious talk. <laughs> man, you brought me back to my friend. Fuck, I can't even think straight. <laughs> Oh man, if you know you in town, man, you gotta come check out the Pin Pro show, man. These guys 
Oh shit, that shit is funny of as fuck. Of course, I'm, you know I'm coming through. I'm mad when I was just there. I didn't get to catch up with that. I caught up with Mom Dukes, and Mom Dukes was so cool. Running around, she was hecka, she was hecka sweet to it. Oh yeah, he uh, ran into my mom at the show. Oh, at the show. I don't know where yeah. it was either. Like the shit was out there, like um the cab or something like he that. Was in the cut, the cab. We was in the cab. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She like, you want to go? And some some there. guy named DC Irving. Like that's my man. <laughs> Tell him I said what's <laughs> up and shit, and you want to go? I'm like, I can't go now. I got a show and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna miss my show to see his show. Say what? It was heck of far though. It was like what about two hours, hours and shit. Yeah, the cab is a, is a minute. Yeah, the yeah. cab is a minute. The college town, northern and shit. Actually, it was, I, a good, it was a good little minute. I I do got a question. I do that one. I was just thinking about this shit just now, because uh, a lot of women, a lot of female comics, they feel that their uh, that their look and their voice should match. So I know a lot of them. Um, they they downplay themselves, but then if they showcase, they dress themselves up. So do you think that the men as well, like their like their set, should match their look, or you think that their voice is just their uh, own to just own that shit? I think you should just own it. I think whatever you, I think whatever you, whatever you like. I I can't do a suit on stage for some reason, mm-hmm. and uh, but that's me. You know what I mean, like. I got you know I don't dress like a homeless person. I just can't do a suit and a tie for some reason. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to throw it on, you know, sooner or later. Whatever the case. When you host the Oscars, <laughs> yeah, when I host the Oscars. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're but, gonna wear a snuggie yeah. and some flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna throw on a little snuggie when I when I host the Oscars. <laughs> but, uh, I put it on when I host the Oscars, nigga. This ain't the Oscars. This is a rib shack. What's up? But that's the whole reason why we do it, man. We do it so we don't have to wear a uniform. We do stand up so we don't have to do, you know, hit the whole uh, the, the the nine to five thing or whatever. And it's, it's nothing against nine to five. It's just that's the whole the, that rebellious spirit of, of of what we do. You know, we tell jokes because it's like it's freedom of expression. You know, like we had to wear uni like we had to wear uniforms to to, to do stand up. I don't think I would do it. Mm. Yeah, after a while though, they thought all kings of comedy came out. They thought every nigga had to wear a suit. Exactly. It was like all these niggas got to wear a suit, and then you got Chappelle and Chucks and jeans. You know, yeah, this shit was funny than that shit. Like, no, <laughs> that shit was great. Both of them were great. I don't know which one was better. Actually, that's a question for you. I remember we had a debate shit. out in Marty's um Marty's um little alley. Was it the hallway? And we were talking about which special was better. Which is give me your top three comedy specials. Hmm. My top three, all right. My top three comedy specials. Oh, you go my five. Number one. You is, go five. Uh, my number one is gonna be um, is gonna be all audio, and it's gonna be Patrice O'Neill, Mr. P. And it's all audio. Mm. Uh, my my number two would might be uh, um, uh, I would say uh, Elephant in the Room, Patrice O'Neill. He got two of my favorites. Wow. Um, that was a funny. That's some funny shit. That was some funny shit. And number three would be, see, I, see, my thing is that with a with a special, it got a uh, like if I watch the like it would be the delirious or raw one of those whatever the case is, or even live from the Sunset Strip with Pryor. Mm-hmm. But I liked it. Uh, I liked it. Uh, Chappelle's what's your name? Killing Softly. Oh, okay. that was so good at the Fillmore. Is that the one at the Fillmore? No, that was the. Um, or is that the other one? Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, I like Killing Me Softly. Yeah, I like killing me softly a lot, but it but it ain't and it, it, it ain't quiet as kept to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh Mike Epps inappropriate behavior. The one in was, D- on uh, Detroit? Yeah, that Oh, that shit one of my, is one fucking of my sick. Yeah. He has a follow he, <laughs> he had to do that one cuz that first special was on the bullshit, honestly, Mike. But <laughs> this one I that did, shit you, 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 Huh? You right, Ronnie. He did the one. He did the one in San Jose, and it was trash. Yeah, but he that shit. To, he had to uh, redeem himself. That, yeah. re, that was a mad redemption. Crazy. I give yeah, my five. Redemption. I give my five. And y'all, I'm like, I'm an old school dude. And I listen to everybody. So I say, prior live at concert, which is on Netflix right now. That shit. I laughed the same way since I was like three or four years old when I seen this shit for the first Wait, time. Which one? Richard Pryor live in concert. That's the one Eddie oh, Murphy references. Um, 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 gold shoes, red shirt, uh, Long Beach. Yep, red shirt. Okay. Yeah, that. Mm-hmm, yeah. De- okay. That delirious. Um, Bill Cosby himself. Um, okay. Chris Rock, Bring the Pain, Killing Them Softly, Chappelle, and probably throw like Danger Fields little sets. Dice Man, I could go all day. Dice Man, um, Robin, yeah. um, Robin Harris shit, and a bunch of Carl and stuff, man. Yeah, I'm. 
I'm a student of it, so those are the ones that I look at, yeah. and that's where a lot of my shit come from. You can kind of, and, and fucking Damon Wayne's still standing. Shit, that shit is fucking that sick. Shit is brilliant. Oh, the HBO. Joint? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, might that, that, that might be five A, five B. Him and Chappelle, because those two, that yeah. well, those three, um, bring the pain, Chappelle, and that one. Those I I, I can I can go word for word with that shit. That shit is just fucking awesome, man. So I'm a big fan of comedy. Yeah, See, I got you I got, got somebody. I got uh, what is that? Which one's purple? Which one's Eddie Murphy red suit? Is that raw? The red suit? Yeah. That's delirious. Uh, that's oh, delirious. Red, yeah. Red, red suit. Delirious. Yeah, yeah. because purple, purple, uh, purple and black is delirious. So uh, raw. So yeah. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Uh, let's see. So that one, I got that one. Uh, fucking both the Chappelle specials is the shit. Yeah. Like those, those stay in the collection. And plus, that mustache is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm digging that Michael Che, that new Michael Che joint. That I just know came Michael out. Che is fucking awesome. Instant classic. Yeah. Instant classic. And I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Sinbad, man. Yeah. People be sleeping on Sinbad, okay. dude. Okay. Like it was. Yeah, oh, yeah, people do. Yeah, he always gets overlooked. Yep. Sinbad yeah. Do be getting overlooked. Oh uh, shit! Which one was it? Uh, it was the one he did at. Uh, at yeah, Morehouse. Morehouse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the first HBO joint. Yo, that shit was cold. I watched that shit again like last week. That shit was solid. Man. Still holds up. Funny, man. Funny. See, we all have oh, different tastes. Choices. But the one thing we have in common oh, yeah. is laughter. <laughs> I don't know why. I had to leave with that silent moment. Nigga, you yeah. look at me like you want a hug. No. <laughs> That's how I yeah, feel about yeah. comedy, that man. Good, that was a good little exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> it's laughter. My heart is warm right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Uh, yo, last question, man. Um, first of all, thank you. Before I, if I don't forget, hey, if I forget, hey, thanks for doing this again. This is fucking awesome, man. Appreciate you, bro. All good. Of course, right, man. You already know. Yeah. Um, how would you like to be remembered, man? After you how your co following and all that stuff, and it's all said and done, it's like, yo, they bring up comics. They having this conversation. We had. Who had the best special? Who's the funniest dude you ever seen? What you want them to say about you? I want them to be like, man, that dude, he, D.C. Irvin, when he did a special, it was special. And then, and, and, and that's it. And I want to remember what, like the, the, like how we talking now, I want to be in somebody's tops. Like, oh, did you see this one though? Like that, I want to remember that. And then just remember it as a, as a stand up. Dude, off the stage too. You know what I mean? Not just who I was on stage, mm. off the stage too, like a solid one. You know what I mean? Like cause that that goes that goes far too. You know, cause we got you know we be building friendships, relationships with you know all our peers and stuff. Right. And I want to you know yeah, of course everybody ain't gonna like you. No. But the people that do like the people I fool with, I want them to be a man. DC was that nigga was, nigga was a good nigga. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, <laughs> just wanna be a good nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga was a good nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> a good nigga. I don't remember as a good nigga, man. <laughs> He just want to be DC, remembered. That good nigga? <laughs> oh, he was a good <laughs> nigga. <laughs> you want to talk about good niggas? <laughs> DC Irvin, though. I want my bitch ready to be titled a good nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Oh, good, man. All right, man. That's it. This kill there, Roddy Ray, my man, Matty Robinson. Yo. My man, DC Irvin, man. Clap for him, Matty. Clap for him. It's been an hour. We've been talking Woo! shit about comedy and life and uh-huh. everything, man. Appreciate you, brother. Thank All right, now I'll, I'll holler at y'all. Yo, sure. Thank you so much. Man. Hey, and remember, kids, <laughs> 24 hours in a day. <laughs> what you do with it is what sets you apart. God bless you. Holler. Peace.